Welcome to the October 6th, 2020 episode of Reactive Consciousness, a in-depth podcast about what happened this week in our lives. I am your host, Vice the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And we have another wonderful show here. We actually have a whole bunch of, like, new stuff that's come out. Um, that That's, like, the big thing. Not a whole lot of announcements this week. Uh, there was one that, like, definitely, like, overtook them all. Um, but it's kind of a letdown to anybody of a certain gener uh, who isn't part of a certain generation. So, but um, uh, and especially to you know uh, the people that were trolling for the, for this sort of update. Um, but uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, Smash Brother <laughs> Brothers news. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, Steve and Alex, uh, Zombie and the Enderman. Uh, from Minecraft are now in uh, Smash Brothers. Ultimately. Yeah, and people our age are complaining about it, forgetting that it is like I think yeah. the best-selling game ever made. Ever <laughs> like, made, like yeah. ever. No, it is the best-selling game ever made. It's just it just was after our time. Yeah. Um, every, every every person, everybody who's twenty five and under, um, has played Minecraft ever since they were a little kid. Uh, yeah. Get over it. Yeah. I mean, like, I think the aesthetic for the level design and everything like that is super clever. Sure. But, like, otherwise, you know, what, whatever, it's fine. Like, I, like, I played Smash Ultimate relatively shortly after it came out. And there you go. I'm good. At this yeah. point, at this point, it's just, oh, they got that license, too. And that, that, eh, that's it. It's just kind of fun. But, uh, I mean, uh, this also goes along with uh, Microsoft's partnership with... Uh, with with Nintendo on a lot of different things, uh, a lot of people forget that micro, uh, Minecraft is a Microsoft property. Um, what are you talking about? It's clearly on PS4. <laughs> um, you saw it. So, like all of the weirdos out there that think, uh, for some reason, that all of the Bethesda stuff that you know they that have been like the best, some of the best selling games of all time, uh, will be locked to one platform is a nutty conception. Uh, especially from a company that doesn't care about locking anything. Remember there. that time Fallout 3 was on like PS3? Remember that yeah. time Skyrim oh. was on PS3 and every system ever made? <laughs> Remember that time 10 years from now they're still going to release fucking Skyrim at like $40? I mean, Microsoft knows what they bought and they'd be foolish to lock it. Remember uh, that time Doom in, in the... Eternal and Doom yeah, 2016 I mean, Doom, were on everything? On. <laughs> they're not. They're not keeping those for themselves. Um, they 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 like the Microsoft um, Series X uh, platform as you know you know as an easy way for people to play video games if they don't want to buy an expensive gaming PC. And, they don't care about locking things to it. And, and by the way, I love that people are like terrified of the concept of things being like like bethesda games for example yeah. being locked to microsoft from now on because microsoft bought it and yet these same people will like break their discs when they realize that the thing that's exclusive to the console they own like three years later is now being ported somewhere I'm, else i'm really all over you know the anti-consumer uh you know posts about exclusivity i mean every you know what uh, good exclusives are a good thing um, sometimes, but like you have nothing to fear. Uh, but also, it's better if they aren't. <laughs> yeah. See, like I, I used to be conflicted on this one because, like not... back back in the day, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, there was a reason to buy both systems because they had yeah. almost completely exclusive libraries. But at the same time, sure. now, you know, when it's not your parents buying it, it's you. It's a lot easier to have, like both consoles are the same library yeah, just, just buy one both. console <laughs> yeah, just have them both i mean like uh uh personally i i think if you're going to buy one of them you're, you're probably gonna go for the ps5 because that's going to have exclusives yeah it'll it, have though. exclusives and yeah. whatever would have been exclusive to the xbox will be on pc as well anyway yeah yeah so i mean mm. uh i think 
I, I, I don't think anything but that... Um, yeah, that fucking uh, Dead Rising DLC. That Dead Rising DLC is the only thing that's locked to... Like, it, yeah, like for the longest time, it was like, well, at least Killer Instinct, but that's on PC now. Well, well, yeah. Sunset Overdrive for sure, that's on PC now. Well, uh, that company's owned by, uh, by Sony now. Okay, so, but it's still um, hit PC. Well, the... The, that com- there, there's a good reason why it moved to PS4. Um, uh, Sunset Overdrive is, is made by um, you know the Racket and Clank people. Um, so. No, f- fair enough, but it went to PC yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and and it went to PS4. So um, yeah, I don't, I didn't even realize it went to PS4. <laughs> yeah, they, they released it as a budget title. Um, <laughs> nice. So I mean, like, yeah, I uh, the exclusivity argument is uh, moot on me. I mean, I do it. I, I play along with it. Because I'm locked into it. Yeah, I, I think uh, but... I think Rare Replay is really it, and Rare even e- then, Rare the Replay, whole yeah. gimmick of that game is that it's ports of older games. Yeah. Like the like the only thing that's like actually exclusive is the Battletoads arcade game, as far as I'm yeah. aware. I mean, I can't think of anything else on there. Um, I mean, like there's some really nice uh, ports of Spectrum games that would be really difficult to play otherwise. Um, Which is not Rare's first time doing that. Nope. Donkey nope. Kong sixty four. But... Yeah, and um, getting back to Smash Brothers, I mean, he's a great choice, um, especially for, for fans of a certain age, like I said. Um, I think that there is plenty uh, of excitement to be had. There's probably one or two Nintendo characters that they're probably going to... Uh, this is like the first of five, I think, right? Um, uh, of the new announcements. So, uh, let, uh, so there's, there's probably... Two more Nintendo characters, and I, I think there's going to be two more, um, you know, guest characters. So, um, and I have no idea what the guest characters could be at this point. No idea. Yeah, how many um, characters do we have left that are, like, popular enough to make it in Smash that haven't already been covered in some we, way? Because remember, Spirits, a, a I think, are stuck in Spirits. For God's sakes. Um, we have the, the most popular... Yeah, we have Terry um, Bogard, which is, like... Terry Bogart. Very hard to believe. <laughs> more than I could have hoped for. Uh, I would never expect Terry to bring in. Uh, bring in geese. Yeah, I mean, we we have all of the classic um, arcade uh, heroes. We have Pac Man. Um, we we have Donkey Kong and Mario. Um, you know, we, we, who else is there? I mean, like really, um, in that realm. The the um, final final reveal. Is gonna be Popeye as like the biggest coup you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that would be awesome. He would be. I, I mean, you know, they like pulled fucking Smash Cloud from FF Seven, so you never know. Yeah, yeah, but um, it also looks like he um has kind of a uh, a gimmick where he has to like mine certain thing. And he has to mine like three things in order to complete a uh, a weapon or something. Like yeah, that. like I mean, that, that's that's Minecraft's whole thing. It's like yeah. it's it's on brand. So it's it's pretty cool. I, it's similar to. Yeah, somebody pointed out it's similar to Phoenix Wright's uh, like gathering evidence, um, you know, moves that he had to do in the in the fighting game he was in. He was in. Oh, um, Marvel's Capcom three. I oh, forgot if it was, was it base ultimate? or ultimate. It might have been ultimate. Yeah. Uh, I think it's ultimate. Yeah. Where he just so. points the accusatory finger at you and just like combos you forever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, get, moving from that, uh, they also revealed the amiibos for from the last phase. Um, so uh, you have the Banjo Kazooie one, which looks really cool it has they have a jiggy piece that actually does it's got like textured fur and everything yeah no that one looks it, it, out of all of them uh that one is the coolest looking one to me um but i i do think uh joker looks particularly cool and 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 also hero from um from uh, uh dragon quest looks great too yeah, so. I, I love how there's like I, i'm definitely picking up terry uh, I, I love Terry's how like there's the like what like 16 or like 18 or 20 like potential amiibos for hero oh there are a lot some there are are even gender choices in some of the games um well that's what i'm saying there's like eight here like i forgot how many alternate costumes you have what is it like a maximum of eight costumes so there's like 16 completely different heroes you could have yeah yeah because there's like male female for each game I, I don't I and nine is completely customizable. I, I think Hero is completely customizable, so he doesn't have like an official art. Well, that that's um, fair, but I mean, just as yeah. far as Smash costumes are concerned, because like there are more Dragon Quest games than there are costume choices. I think right. Yeah. There's like eight costumes. I want to say. Yeah, I think they pick, they picked um most of the mainline ones. Yeah, so so there's sixteen yeah. potential Hero amiibos. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and you know, like, certain ones are just going to be super rare. Japan is going to destroy fun. those. Yeah. Like, they're, they're going to flip out. <laughs> um, also, this was a big surprise. I, I didn't I didn't see this until now. Uh, Travis Touchdown it was really revealed as a Mii Fighter uh, Yeah, option. like, on, on one hand, I'm disappointed that he's not going to be a playable character. But on the other hand, he was never going to be a playable character. He's, yeah, he's mean, way too lewd. So, like, he, this, this is yeah. the closest Nintendo would dare come to I mean, putting Travis in the just like game. him and it has a move set that is something he would do so you know does it include his idol animation <laughs> <laughs> i don't think so oh, okay. uh, i don't think you would you would catch a beat fighter doing the, yeah they, that. they wouldn't put my in the game at all so travis good luck <laughs> yeah no 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 but uh yeah uh i i can't think i on i mean who, who's a bigger hero from the NES era other than, like, some, Simon Belmont? Nah, for, for, forget NES. Yeah. We obviously need Jack from Mad World. Uh, that, that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, really? I'm, Why not? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think, like, uh, uh, they're probably... If Gino's a thing, probably isn't. But well, no, G- no G- G- Gino's amiibo, so it's over. Uh, actually, for real, how about Amaterasu? Amaterasu would be like, a good Amaterasu's choice. been in a fighting game, Tatsunoko versus Capcom, it can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Amaterasu is a good good choice. Um, I, I can't, I, uh, maybe um, Chris Redfield or, or um, you know, It's Jill. possible. That's possible. I mean, Jill's actually been done multiple times. Yeah, I mean, she was um, in MVC 2. Yeah, before. and... Uh, and what what game was she in her five costume? Was that MVC three Ultimate again? Uh, it's probably Ultimate. Yeah. I I want to say she was DLC for something because she was part of the DLC that disappeared and then came out again oh, when the Super Version came out. Yeah. MVC three then. Yeah. Yeah, because there was, was Jill, Jill and Shimogorath. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like it, it's possible. I'm just curious. I'm actually genuinely curious as to how they would make them look. I mean, you know, they would have old and new costumes, but like. Making them work in that universe. I wonder if they would have their stupid forty-five degree aiming. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they, they, they could they could even do something like a little offbeat, like maybe just do a tyrant or a or the nemesis. Um, no, no, cool. not without the protagonist. They they've never done something without the main protagonist. For, they could do Chris and tyrant or nemesis, but they are not going to do just yeah. nemesis or Chris or whatever. It, uh, unless that's a first. Mm. That's why they're not going to do, for example, Iori, unless they release Kyo, when nobody gives a shit about Kyo. <laughs> Terry's freaking cool. They could I do mean, Geese now. Terry's already there, so... Yeah, Terry's already there. They could do Geese, but Iori, I mean, for example, do, is not happening. They could do Iori, I mean... Not so, really. Not really. Why not? I mean, Terry's no. a King of Fighters character. No, but I, like, I, no, I just said, though, Kyo. Like, Kyo is the King of Fighters guy. Terry is in King of Fighters, but Terry's the Art of Fighting guy. Like, they would have to have Geese no, for him. Theory. Oh, excuse me, Fatal Fury, you're right. Yeah, Ryo is Art of Fighting. So they could, they could do Geese, but Iori would be, like, Iori, Iori, Iori would be stretching it. He was in the, he was in the reveal. <laughs> he was in yeah, the he, reveal I mean, he video. sure was. A bunch of characters were. And I freaking love Iori, but he's not a Fatal Fury guy. Like, Terry, like, the whole King of Fighters is, like, the big crossover game until it became just its own thing, but, like... It's more likely a, a Tekken character. Yeah, um, like... Honestly. Iori is from the game that, like, Rugal is from, and Rugal has nothing to do with Terry. I mean, a uh, Virtual Fighter character. Uh, maybe. That'd be amazing. Um, you know, Akira, Akira, probably. Yeah, again, it would have to be Akira, even though he's, like, the most boring character. I, I, I would prefer Jackie, but, you know, you, you gotta do Akira. I, I always like Wolf. Wolf was my character. Wolf, I, Wolf, I actually like playing as probably mm-hmm. the most, but I like Jackie as a character the most. Cool, cool. I mean, um, I, I, they're we're running out of like big name, like even in the classic realm. Maybe um, they could do Neo Geo characters. Battle Coliseum. They could do like Marco from uh, Metal Slug. Yeah, Marco from Metal Slug. Yeah, I think it, there are. There aren't going to be any more SNK. Uh, they could have know. Mars people from Elsla. I mean, um, we we already have Solid Snake for Konami and 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 the yeah, Belmont. and that itself was like um, flabbergasted. Like I can't believe they got Solid Snake. That was ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, uh, Alucard would have been a good choice, but he's you know relegated to a, like a you know side thing. So well, th- that that one's debatable. Alucard is possible because yes, he's a side thing, but so was Ridley. Okay. So, so like he, I, I think a spirit is the seal of doom, but background hazard is apparently not Alucard so bad would anymore. Be a great choice. I mean, uh, people would, would love to play as Alucard. 
people would flip if you could play as Alucard. That'd be amazing. And we've already see, got Simon did you see Richter. That tweet? <laughs> Count Jocula's son. Oh yeah, it's like whatever Chocula's backward. Yuck. Yeah, Alucard or whatever. It's so stupid. <laughs> Sorry, man. Vampires just got to name kids that way. I never thought about that. That, that was really funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I get, there are so few like big, like iconic characters left because they've done such a good job in acquiring them. Yeah, you um, gotta wonder if they're gonna start going into like, like huge indie titles like Minecraft. Like, yeah, that's, like, like that's... they get the woman from Transistor or something. Oh yeah, that would be really neat. Um, I would think they would want Sans before any of them, and, and they relegated him to it. Yeah, he's fighter. he's a me uh, a me uh, a me fighter. I was gonna say amiibo, but yeah, he's a me fighter, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's like the biggest indie character. Not not to mention, is. you're not doing Sans without uh, your character I mean, there's uh, from Undertale. Uh, there's always Cuphead and Master Chief if we're going with Microsoft. Yeah, the, uh, Cuphead would be fucking amazing. Cuphead has a lot of potential too. Like, yeah, Cuphead would be you can genuinely do good. Mug Man, you know, with a, with a swap. With oh, very costume, easily. So, yeah. The only problem is like they would have to do like, I don't know, fan made oh, other he's costumes. A, he's a um, he's a me fighter too. I forgot Cuphead's a me fighter. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I forgot that. Yeah. So yeah, Master Chief and like Doom Guy are possible, but I don't really like want them. <laughs> yeah, it would. Be, um, Doom guy, like he would, like he doesn't have much of a pre a presence outside of his own eyes, <laughs> you know, like yeah, <laughs> he, like that would be cool though. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I doubt it. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I would, I would love to see a Smash Doom level, like how, however they handle that. <laughs> That would be the coolest shit. Like Doom 64 scrolling in the background while you play. <laughs> yeah, they could do like scrolling backgrounds or they could just have like Doom 3 or Doom 2016's like hell in the background. With I just think it would be cool stuff. if they went with Doom 64 because that was the, the Nintendo exclusive one for the longest time. You know? so, yeah, that um, the weird Nintendo exclusive Doom for like 15 years or whatever. <laughs> well, we'll, 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 we'll have to dream. How, how about uh, every member of the Killer 7? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool as shit each one of the palette swaps is completely different than the other yeah they're just um, a diff they're just different characters in, entirely including a guy in a wheelchair with a with a sniper rifle yeah who he um, won't hit you but if he does you're fucking dead <laughs> <laughs> all right well we gotta move on here um you you put this one in here so i'll let you uh move forward with it yeah this was a bit of a weird one uh spider-man the ps4 game uh if you buy it as a downloadable title or if they're re-releasing it physically or whatever, if you get the PS5 version of Spider-Man PS4, you'll notice that Peter Parker's face does not look the same. <laughs> and this was not because of a scandal like Yakuza 4, oh, we gotta get that actor out of here. They just changed it to look, people think th the idea was to look more like Tom Holland because he's sure. from the you know, the, the Marvel Universe. Sure. Um, but everyone's like, "What? Why would you change the character? Like, I like I have this emotional attachment to like this version of Peter Parker because it's a actually a legitimately emotional game, and there's nothing, there's no drama. It's like why, like why fix if why fix it if it ain't broke, yeah. you know? Um, and and that's really that's really the whole story. Just that the face was changed, but there's a, there's a lot of backlash about it, partly yeah. for that reason, and partly because people just don't like change of any kind." <laughs> Yuri Lowenthal himself, uh, the voice of Peter Parker cool, in that game, weighed like, in. He's like, "Sorry, guys." It's... I, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, like, it's a clever know. idea, but yeah. like, you don't need like the, the problem though is if they're making it look more like Tom Holland, it just like you just feel the like the corporate decision. It's not like oh, we yeah. think it'd be better if we had this face. It's just like more of a corporate tie into the movie universe, which feels like just cold business decisions so it's like come on don't like just let, let the game exist on its own jesus christ there's nothing yeah. wrong with it that we felt the need because again a as a reminder in yakuza 4 the the actor who played tani mora the cop uh had some scandal where people thought he was in possession of drugs or something and i think it ultimately turned out that he wasn't but like man japan cannot stand drugs so they were like nope and they uh they just if you buy yakuza 3 Four. Yeah, four. If you buy Yakuza 4 Remastered, uh, you're going to see that different face, different voice. Yeah, yeah. So, like, but Spider-Man is not that. They're just like, let's let's bring it closer to the Marvel Universe because Sony and movies. And it's like, it's fucking... So, I mean, like, 
Do I personally care what the face looks like? Not really. I'm more disappointed by the motivation behind the change. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, another... And um, I, I was actually going to talk about a bunch of games that were released um, yeah, yeah. It, it, because uh, there's been some doozies here, and I I, I, I missed a couple of them too. So in 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 the last week, but uh, Star Wars Squadrons was released, um, uh, which is a successor to the X-wing Tie Fighter series. Uh, so it's a space sim, um, and it was released on. Uh, on PC, at least, and I'm not quite sure about console. Probably console. Too. I want to say, well, if it was PC and it got a console release, probably Xbox. I but I want to say it was released on PS4 as well. But I'll I'll look into that while you go right ahead. Yeah, yeah. I think it it must have because why would they make? Nah, it it's it's on everything but Switch. Days. It's what you'd expect. Yeah. yeah okay. PS4, Xbox One, Windows. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it looks like. Uh, the reaction to it is mixed, but a lot of it is, like, for really crunchy reasons. I, I, I was just gonna say, like, does the game suck, or do people who have never played X-Wing and TIE Fighter, like, realize, like, no, I think those games are pretty, problem. like, those games are cool, but they're rough. <laughs> uh, I think it's the opposite problem. I think a lot of the old school people that wanted X-Wing and TIE Fighter are bad-mouthing it, whereas a lot of the newer people uh, like it. Oh, so yeah. is this like the System Shock 2 to Bioshock thing, where like yeah. they had to simplify it because you need to be able to play it with a controller? Yeah, exactly. Because there's like a thousand commands on the computer games, where um, like you, you could call your wingman, which, I mean... They, they had that in Rogue Leader for the GameCube, you know, that, that's that been a thing. But, like, there's shift power to guns, shift power to shields, speed up, slow down. There's a lot of little things that are, like, I don't know if they're more than a controller can handle, but it, it really is a lot, so they probably wanted to make it more, like, user-friendly. Yeah, so, um, I, I think one of the concerns is that, like, uh, like, keyboard commands aren't as fully uh realized as like the older games because those games had like you playing your keyboard like it's like a piano um, yeah like know, if it, like just go go look up like a jpg of the keyboard controls for x-wing or tie wing fighter or any of them uh, any of them really yeah um, i never played wing commander but same thing like i believe yeah. it yeah like just yeah. look at it just like i mean it's like anything once you start Mech, playing Mech you Warrior figure it out but when you just one. look at it you're like what Mech, Mech Warrior probably had the. Had the oh, Mech Warrior was terrifying. Like yeah. I didn't, I didn't play much of it, but have you seen the manual oh, for yeah. Mech Warrior Two? It's insane. It's yeah. it's like this is such a stupid comparison to make because this is another thing that sounds simple, but do you remember the manual for like our TI eighty three calculators? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a like calculator. An How complicated could it be? Oh fuck! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mech Warrior was like that. I mean, everything that I've seen about the gameplay and the graphics. Uh, have been good. I mean, the story is rote, but it's Star Wars. What do you want? Um, I mean, uh, that was that was one thing. Like, I don't know what the plot of the new game is at all. But one thing I have to say I liked about the older X Wing and Tie Fighter games is that they just did their own thing. It wasn't like let's bring Luke into this. It yeah, was, it, it was its own thing. You were some guy. <laughs> well, a lot of people forget that like. A lot of the reason why, like, a lot of the PC games from the uh, 90s era um, of Star Wars, what what made them so good is those were basically the new entries we got during the 90s. Yeah, because Dash we, Rendar, we, they, they tied that to the original trilogy, but Kyle Katarn just totally did his own thing. I mean, like, uh, there were... The, like the dark trooper lore that they added yeah, yeah, and yeah. all that stuff like, yeah, it, like it wasn't just find a way to cameo one of the five no. main characters from the movies from the 70s into this like they really were their own thing People jedi knight dark forces 2 yeah. is one of the better star wars games of its era and some of the controls haven't aged perfectly well today but like that yeah. game mostly holds up in story and gameplay perspective yeah, we didn't get pre the prequels or TV shows until, what, 99? Uh, it so was way like, later. It was when we were in high school. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it was 99, right? Um, yeah, it, it must have been like end of middle school, beginning yeah, of high school. 90, been right 97 was when they did the re-release of the original trilogy. So Okay, okay. Um, I, and I certainly remember that. So um, yeah, it, it might have been late middle school, early high school then. Because we went to yeah. high school in like 2001. I think it was around the same time as it, like, X-Men and uh, The Matrix and all that stuff. But, yeah, um, yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it, I'm sure this is a good game. Uh, it just looks cool. 
Um, and you know what? I think it's one of those games that probably over time will evolve with a DLC and stuff like that. Yeah. And, it'll and, be even better. and not to mention, like you said, it's more of an X-Wing and TIE Fighter game rather than like the Rogue Squadron Rogue Leader type. But, yeah. but even so, it's nice to have another one of those. It's sure. been a while. The last time we had one was on the GameCube. Yeah, and they they have this game has all kinds of options, especially if you play it on um on on PC. Like it has Hotas support, it has uh uh like VR support. Um, yeah, I VR in a game like that's gonna be nuts. Yeah, it's VR on PS4 too, so we could, we could try that out. Like um, th- this is one of those games where like even from the original like X Wing game. It's just kind of like, man, I wish I could see this for real. Like, th- th- yeah. this is that chance. Like, when did they first do this? The like, with really the Ace good. Combat game or whatever? Ace Combat 7 or something? Or Zone of the Enders 2? Oh, yeah. Ace Combat 7 was uh, actually considered to be a really... Um, yeah, and, like, Zone of the Enders success. 2 VR. So, like, here's your chance for that that Star Wars flight simulator you've always wanted, where it actually, with the VR, feels like a flight simulator. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, like I said, I think a lot of it's backlash for anticipation... Um, you know, like, you know, yeah, uh, I mean, again, like, what did you expect? If this is going to be playable on PS4 and Xbox one, it's not going to be a, an insane, you know, like, like you said, crunchy keyboard game. It makes me think of like Ultima. They're not going to make Ultima like Ultima one again, where it's like the hard, most hardcore crunchy, like RPG experience. Like they're Nobody just not going to do anymore. that because it doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't appeal but, to the mainstream anymore. There's a reason why those games aren't made anymore. And it, it, it's because they were too hard for a general audience. Um, yeah, they like, were of their time. Like, back then, okay. it, like, D&D nerds would play Ultima, and they'd be like, all right, this feels like my incredibly complicated D&D game, but even D&D has been more player-friendly lately. Like, actual D&D. So, so just to give you an idea, the objective reviewers, um, you know, on Metacritic, have given it an 80... Um, it have totaled up to be an 81, which, you know, that that's good. Yeah, that's um, quality. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, user score, people are, are review bombing it, you know, because yeah, they, I mean, like, they want it and all that. Well, well to, shit, take, so. to take things from the other side, like, I don't want to see a score of 100 because, like, I call bullshit yeah. on that. <laughs> no, but this is this is high for a, for a meta score. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, like, Eurogamer doesn't give out good, good scores for no reason, and they gave it an 80. Um, that's a really high score for them. And not um, to mention, if you went back to X Wing and Tie Fighter and reviewed them now, what do you think they would get? Like, like this is on par. Yeah, I mean, th- this looks like a fun game. Uh, it it really does. Um, let me see what US Gamer had to say because US Gamer has has probably the most trusted reviews, I think. Um, which they're they're a spinoff of uh, Eurogamer as it is. So, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'll accept your cookies. <laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> Hope they're chocolate chip. <laughs> I do. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Um, yeah, Cat Bailey was really looking forward to this game. And gave it a four out of five. That's great. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, hope that the, I hope that the game is not as punishing as the older games were too. Oh, like, they're too hard. Even, even Tie even, Fighter. If you're dead, go fuck yourself. Like well, I mean, Tie Fighter is easier than X Wing. That. Well, that, that's two. why I said. That's why I said fuck. even Tie Fighter. Yeah, yeah. like X X Wing X. X Wing is just fucking impossible, and Tie Fighter. I, well, but any of those games, though, if you die, you could continue from the level you were on. But like, if you care about high score or rank, like it's gone if you die. No, those games are brutal. Um, no, I'm 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 excited for this game. I'll probably get the PS4 version just so I can I can play it on uh, VR. That'll be fun. Um, yeah, I trust Cat Bailey more uh, to have a level head about almost anything. So. Um, I think it, it's it's a good game then. Uh, Splunky Two is out, which is uh, uh, the sequel, the long-awaited sequel to the basically the progenitor of the roguelite genre. Um, Splunky HD was basically where we got our Binding of Isaacs from, our, our Enter the Gungeons, uh, our our um, you know and any of the Metroidvania ones that have been popping up lately. Um, Baroque. Well, no, no, that's no. that's a that's an actual roguelike, not a not much of a light. Oh, actually, um, that's true. Like th- there is an ultimate sense of progression, but yeah, if you die, you're gone. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so apparently, everybody loves this game. Like everybody who loved the original, uh, got what they wanted with the sequel. So that's that's really cool. 
Um, I didn't play much of the original, to be completely honest, because I didn't like the genre until I played Enter the Dungeon, really. Um, so uh, I did I did like what I played of uh, Binding of Isaac, but um, I never got into it to the extent that I did with Enter the Dungeon. Um, yeah, but, yeah it's looks- kind of similar for me. Like, I, I never really touched Spelunky, but I, I did get into Binding of Isaac. Uh, like and into you? the dungeon, uh, and um, you got into Binding of Isaac. Yeah, I like it's 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 little known, but like I, that's actually a secret kind of hobby of mine. <laughs> you, 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 please go back to our old episodes where he and and uh, Yo man Stoppy. It's been a while. <laughs> old man Stoppy would uh would talk about uh Binding of Isaac for an entire episode. Yeah, and Vice would just be like, oh, it's several, one of these. For, yeah. Several times in a row. <laughs> yeah, like, to, to, to put things into perspective, I have Platinumed Afterbirth Plus. Yeah, yeah. Which is fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking forward to giving this one a try. Uh, I, I, I hope it comes out on um, on uh, on Switch pretty soon, because, this, you know, roguelites are perfect on the Switch, you know, if you have them on the Switch. Yeah, go. there's a lot of stuff that... I mean, it's almost anything that's perfect on the Switch. Play a little bit, stop it, put it away. Yeah, no. It, like, roguelites really good. are good because you get your one little run. But then again, long RPGs are great, too, because you're like, oh, this is too long. I'm just going to pause it right if, now. If, <laughs> it's if, great. if it weren't for the Switch version of uh, Dragon Quest Eleven, I would have never beaten that game. Yeah, would, you, probably, you probably wouldn't have even started. Or you would have no. played for, like, two hours and be like, all right, I, I think have. I get it. I wouldn't have. Um, and... That that was a that was one of my favorite gaming experiences of, of this generation was playing that game. So I'm really glad it was available to me uh, in the, in that fashion. My um, favorite so far was probably uh, Castlevania 64. I mean, it's not of this generation, but I'm playing it this generation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's very timely. It's very timely uh, with our uh, with our Castlevania retrospective. Yes, it's uh, perfection. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, speaking of, there was Binding of Isaac. Um, yes. Did you, did you see this? I'm sure you. Did. I uh, like. I haven't looked into the details, but I'm aware yeah. of it because like, uh, Repentance has not been re- uh, released yet, but like, it, it's coming. And like, there's a lot of it is kind of like I think what Afterbirth was, where it's fan mods that have retroactively become official, yeah. which I'm a little I'm a little ambivalent about, but it's still cool that we're getting something else. So, um, Ed Mc Ed Mc McMillan, um calls it the last sequel sized uh expansion which he might go back on who knows well that was the thing yeah at the end of afterbirth plus the the final trophy is like a big stop sign and says you could stop now yeah but i mean i'm all for like a community-led experience with this type of game they should just kind of like hand the reins over to the community at some yeah point. like yeah, i just hope it. that the trophy some of the trophies in afterbirth plus felt like straight up malicious so i hope they don't do that again like greed mode was hard and then they released greedier mode which is literally the same thing only plus one more wave of enemies do it all again for a whole other set of trophies yeah, fuck you played again. and and the result yeah. yeah yeah straight up and there was also uh the trophy for like doing the daily challenges which i actually thought was pretty cool but Two of them were very irritating. One of them was successfully complete a run on a daily challenge five days in a row. So if you die on the fourth or fifth one, go fuck yourself. Try again tomorrow for five days in a row. And there was another one that was just play the daily challenges. Yeah. Um, for like, live or die doesn't matter, but just log in and do something sure. for a month straight, which is way easier to do. But if you have like internet problems or you gotta like you gotta leave or whatever, then you're out of luck. Well, uh, let, let's see some of the notes here on the Steam page. Uh, Finding of Isaac, uh, repentance is so huge and so new and so feature packed it makes the previous updates look like prequels. That um, actually. I'm, I'm actually nervous about that. Like, I don't want it to be too huge. <laughs> there are more features, improvements, and new secrets. Too many secrets than most games that would include in a, uh, be included in an official sequel. It's an immense amount of new content to explore, even if you're at 1 million percent. So, um, let's see here. It is the final, in quotes, update to the award-winning classic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let me see here. It, it, it's saying... There will be... Yeah, so basically, it, it, it seems like it's a brand new game. 
just like in terms of the amount of content uh, almost um yeah features uh, 130 plus new items uh, oh so there's, christ there's more than 700 items in total and now. that's that's really bad because that means 130 new them. trophies like because oh. <laughs> like you got to unlock them right well, like, well i mean some of them might just be shop stuff but a lot of those, I bet you, have to be unlocked. That's not necessarily 130 new achievements, but that's that's a lot. Like, have fun getting them. A, a full alternate path with brand new chapters and a new final boss and ending. There um, have been a lot of new final bosses. This is actually... Yeah. Cool. How do you... Like, there was Mega Satan, and that wasn't the final, final boss. Then there was Hush. Then there was fucking Delirium. Like, where do you go from there? Edmund McMillan, man. Maybe it's him. Um. Yeah, that would be... I mean, that'd be... It's funny conceptually, but lame is a true final boss. <laughs> he speaks backward. <laughs> to beat this game, he must defeat me, Edmund McMillan. <laughs> um, maybe it is just John Romero. Um, uh, on, a, on a pike. Um, 100 plus new enemies. 25 plus <sighs> uh, new bosses. Jesus um, Christ, dude. Uh, two new playable characters, two new challenges, a hundred plus new achievements. <laughs> uh, there, see, there it is. There it is. Five thousand plus new room designs. So yeah, I'm surprised I mean, there's only two new characters, but I'm I'm happy with that. I mean, uh, it, it's coming out on December 31st. I mean, you're you're gonna get your money's worth with it. It's hard. You can oh no, no doubt. I'm just intimidated. Like here yeah. we go again. Like you know, I I I, I platinumed OG Isaac. I fails to platinum rebirth, but then I got rebirth plus. Then afterbirth came out and plus. Here we go again, and now <laughs> now they're pulling me back in one more time. <laughs> Dangle that carrot. Oh my god. But you know what? Um, I I, I love it when this thing hap- a kind of thing happens because like, uh, like this guy just made a game one day, and then it got, it just got, it exploded over time. You know, yeah, like, and that was after he made a game that exploded. You know, yeah. Super Meat Boy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they and that game started off as a uh, as a flash game on Newgrounds. So I mean, like yeah, and and even it had references to um. No, I for, no, I forgot if that game had references to older stuff. Or oh, if it was like, just Isaac that did that, because oh, like yeah. Larry Jun- Larry Junior, well, yeah, Gish is a, its own game, and Larry yeah. Junior is a reference to Larry, a boss from Meat Boy. There's there's a lot of that kind of thing going on. Sure, I'm sure, sure I haven't touched the end is nigh, but I'm sure it does a bunch of stuff like that too. Sure. Um, moving on from that, uh, this was a big surprise. So they remade the original Mafia game. Um, uh, this was a game that was released in the PS2 era, but like everybody would tell you to not play the ps2 version you would need to play like the pc version that's where it's at um and uh, apparently people really liked it for its story and character development however uh its gameplay wasn't like the best and it it didn't run very smoothly even with like the best of um settings and things like that so um they remade this game and basically took care of all of the things that everybody hated about the game. <laughs> Very nice. So, like, it, it's it's one of those instances like don't don't play the original anymore. Uh, they 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 um, they retained the integrity of what made the original good. Uh, like, they kept the story, like the storytelling, and everything is. Uh, they retained all that that stuff. Um, they didn't. Sh- really change anything uh when it came to that uh but they improved like the shooting and things like that um which is what people didn't like about it and it runs okay. really well plays like a modern game now um and uh you could buy it along with the rest of the trilogy as well uh, i i hear the other two mafia games are quite good uh, especially Ma- mafia 3 so um they all take place in different time periods i think the third one takes place in the 70s uh, this one takes place in like you know prohibition era that kind of thing but uh i just thought that was really neat that you know after all these years you know you have something that's all fixed up so yes um crash bandicoot 4 also came out and a lot of people are are liking digging that as well uh, they're saying that it was better than the remasters so very nice um, uh i think that that's pretty cool um i probably won't be getting that uh because I, I don't know i'm just not into that type of game anymore but uh, I'm glad that it was good. Uh, I, I 
I, I think it's pretty pretty cool. Um, and it's always bad to to see like a it's you know a, a franchise that's trying to come back and after so much time and then they just screw it up and like it gets lost to time again. Um, so this is good. I thought this was interesting and, and also a really cool bonus. So EA uh, is releasing a current roster version of NHL 94, like the Genesis game. Yeah, I, I quite um, like stuff like this. Uh, as a pre-order bonus for the new NHL 21. Uh, so I think that's really, really cool. <laughs> uh, and and a, a bunch of people on, on Twitter were basically saying, oh man, I wish I could buy that on its own. Uh, oh yeah. It, I mean, it, no it, doubt when this comes out, someone's going to... They're gonna put the ROM into a cart. Yeah. Well, there are two ways this could go. Uh, it's an actual ROM hack, uh, or it could be like a live patch. Oh, okay. Um, you got to hope that it's not a live patch for that, because um, there have been quite a few, um, uh, like, let for the River City Ransom collection that came out on Switch a little while ago, um, those aren't actually updated ROMs. They, uh, like, if you if you do, were to dump the ROMs, it'd be they'd be like the Japanese ones. Uh, oh. It's like real time patched uh, to to have the English that they they added to it. So, um, like, somebody would have to figure out a ROM hack in order to to uh, make that all happen. It's not just a simple like tear it out of the uh, tear it out of the uh, the original. Uh, you know, holding spot for it, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, but it's still really cool. I, I, I think that's a really neat thing. And a lot of people say like NHL 94 is like their favorite, um, out of, out of all the, um, versions of, of, of that hockey, um, kind of thing. So, uh, I, I know plenty of people that stopped playing sports games after this era, like, because they got, they got too complicated. Um, moving on from that, this is another similar announcement. So I talked about uh, the Elise collection that, that's going to have um, uh, the uh, Game Gear Elise games and um, their, their shmup games on the Game Gear and the uh, Sega Master System. They're actually going to make a brand new game in the style of the Game Gear ones, which is insane. So they're making a brand new Game Gear sequel. <laughs> GG yeah, how bizarre. Three. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's that's M two for you. They'll they'll go they'll go and do that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, they they just basically made a brand new uh, sequel to uh, you know an old style game, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and actually speaking of uh, Game Gear stuff, I don't know if you saw this, but do you remember that that little knickknack Japan was releasing? Like the oh, I forgot what it was called, the Game Gear Micro or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. The time. Mm-hmm. Did you see the picture of the console, like with a size perspective no but isn't it about the size of like a gba game or something like that yeah i saw a picture of it uh like on twitter sitting next to like a vmu from a dreamcast oh yeah and i mean the game gear thing is horizontal and the vmu is vertical but like they're similarly sized which on one hand that's crazy but on the other hand nobody's going to want to actually play with that. How are you going to play yeah, a game it's, on it's it? it's a tchotchke. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm more excited about the collection. Um, yeah, yeah. To be, to be honest, because um, you have four games that are hardly ever re-released, plus a, a brand new sequel that, uh, you know, you, ne- you never get that kind of thing anymore. So yeah. I'm really excited about that. Um, really super excited, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on from that, uh, we had like some kind of things pointing to uh, Silent Hill Two uh, or Silent Hill Four getting a PC yeah, release. It was four. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, but it ended it ended up being actually re- released after that. Um, GOG uh, has uh, Silent Hill Four on it now, and apparently they did a bunch of work to restore some of the problems with it. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so. now everybody who swears up and down that they actually liked Silent Hill 4 back in the day and no, it's it's not the Black Sheep, it's my favorite <laughs> game, can relive their experience of whining about the game and forgetting the nostalgia they had for it. <laughs> I mean, the game's okay, but like, d- don't don't bullshit me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 there's no way that it's better than Silent Hill 2. I mean, Silent Hill 2 is probably... Well, 1, 2, or 3. I mean, 4 yeah. is brilliant conceptually. The gameplay's all right. Yeah, it's it's not like 
it's just there it's just like the uh the majora's mask effect i mean majora's mm-hmm. mask is really good but like everybody hated it at launch but then you have everybody oh no actually i loved it like but with silent hill 4 it's actually kind of middling people are like whatever man like i'm i'm a hipster i think it's my favorite one yeah, like, maybe one those, maybe like, it is but way too many people say that for me to believe them yeah yeah no it's like one of those like it's not popular so but it has some redeeming quality so yeah. i like it better I mean, like, like, yeah, like, I like it, but, like, yeah. come on, one, two, and three. Uh, two, two for, for me, is probably the best horror game ever made. Like, I, I, I Yeah, two like, is way up there. I, I can't uh, but, think of anything that, that rivals it other than maybe Remake. Um, remake is also incredibly good. And, and, uh, and, and Resident Evil 2, RE2 Remake's really fun. RE2 good. Remake. <laughs> uh, I, I still need to play that one, but I would also say Eternal Darkness. Yeah, uh, but like Silent Hill Four uh, again, I love. I don't think the story progression, to, but like uh, it makes you run through every level twice. Like, it's just it's just irritating. I, I, I two just has the the right story and symbolism to go with it, and all kinds of like yeah uh, inference and, and stuff like that. It, it's which is it's exactly so why that that is exactly why I'm not much of a fan of a lot of what the western games tried to do like i like yeah. them more than like a lot, a lot of people just outright shit on them i generally like them but way too many of them try to have like heavy-handed symbolism um homecoming does a better job with this and origins to a degree downpour is way too on the nose um and the, like there every one of them tries to have some sort of silent hill 2 like big twist reveal at the end where like one never tried that three Eh, not really not like uh my perceptions have been wrong for this reason but like homecoming did that origins did that in a really bad way downpour did that in an unnecessary way like just do your own thing stop trying to have like a big reveal at the end you don't need that for a game to work well um i think what's cool about this is that at least um they fixed up that some of the the uh, like some of the missing hauntings are are all they're they're put back into the game. Um, yeah, like, I, I do have to give a shout out. I, I I do have to admit, Silent Hill Four gets gets the bump for doing sanity effects before Eternal Darkness. They're not sanity effects; they're hauntings, like you say. Yeah, but but they're sanity effects. <laughs> like in your apartment. Oh no, what's happening now? And like some of that stuff is actually creepy. Well, uh, I I think that's really cool. So um, they. I mean, this is a fine. Uh, from 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 what I read, uh, this is a fine version to get. Unlike uh, you know the Metal Gear Solid one and two releases, um, you know that that had some significant flaws uh, yeah, that got yeah. put up recently. But th- this one appears to be like pretty legit. Um, and I, I saw people wondering if they'll do the the two and three PC releases, yeah, why not? but like. Yeah, like like Konami famously lost the source code for two, and its remaster was crap. And three, they had to release, or excuse me, they had to replace like the voice actors for that entire game. So I, I don't see three on PC coming back anytime soon. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, um, this, this is a strange time for Konami to be uh, generous all of a sudden with, with some extra releases. So um, yeah, well, that's because they're not releasing anything new except for Skill Attack. Just like let's just sell all of our ten and twenty year old games again. Yeah, I mean, but it's more than what they had been doing. Is, is that point. is true. That is true. Um. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what what time will bring. But this is a, this is a good one. Um, go go after it if you're interested. Yeah. Um, and this uh, is your chance because like getting these games on PC, even four, uh, like physically, is not very easy anymore. <laughs> Especially yeah, two yeah. and three. Good luck. Um, on the Switch, Super Mario Brothers uh, 35 was released. Uh, so this is the um, the online only. Um, experience where uh, 35 people are playing Mario at once and throwing garbage at each other, kind of like, um, c- kind of like Tetris 99. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. S- similar concept, uh, but uh, it's free if you if you have a Switch Online uh, service, which is um, one of the most reasonable um, services that I've ever paid for. It's twenty dollars a year. I mean, uh, to have access to um, all. A really great library of Nintendo and Super Nintendo games, um, which it didn't start off that great, but it, it it's it's really solid now. Um, yeah, the Switch's library has like the digital library has really exploded since its launch. 
it, it's really good. I mean, uh, I can't think of too many non-licensed games that it doesn't have, and, and the ones that it doesn't have, it's understandable, or you can get them. Um, yeah. like, like the Castlevania games, <laughs> like uh, you, you can get them in a, in a collection. Um, Mega Man, you can get those in a collection, uh, you know, separately. Um, the only ones that aren't in there that don't have a collection uh, are you know, uh, Final Fantasy games, which, you know, Square will one day get off their ass and give us a crappy port of... <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say, they'll give us a shitty mobile version of yeah. Final Fantasy 1 or whatever. Oh, yo, get, I, I can't wait to, to like, go... they fucked up Dragon Quest. Like, what chance does Final <laughs> Fantasy have? I can't wait for us to get an ugly-ass-looking uh, version of Final Fantasy 6. I can't wait. Um, I mean, we already <laughs> do. It's called the Steam release. Yeah, but I can't wait for it to go on the Switch and... and be somehow more egregious. Uh, I, I yeah, the, we, we, we thought that these graphical settings would be better, even though literally everybody on the internet <laughs> says that all they want is just a direct port of the game. The originals, man. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Maybe the GBA version. Just give me the GBA versions, even. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, give me the DS version of Chrono Trigger. Just throw that on there, please. <laughs> I, I thought I thought the the Steam release was the DS version. It actually. is. It is. Okay. They actually, um, and that was only they only did that because everybody complained after it was released. It yeah, no shit. Um, I, I heard that there might be like a cutscene or two missing, which yeah. is frustrating. But otherwise, it like I think this is as good as it's gonna get. It, it, it's the definitive version of, uh, of how to play it. Really, I mean, if you if you need a TV version, uh, it's the, the PC release of Chrono Trigger. But um. Um, I just want to mention uh, Super Mario Bros. 35 because that, that's a cool concept. It, it, it's free, so why not? Um, yeah. Also, out of nowhere, Left 4 Dead got a uh, an update um, with uh, content that's called the Last Sen- uh, Last Stand. Sorry. Um, and it was a is a community made update that um like you know kind of like you were saying with Binding of Isaac like Valve sanctioned it and cleaned it up and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. But um like Left 4 Dead has been long um you know long neglected even though it was it was very heavily played. Um so I think it's pretty cool that they they did a new update here. Do you think Australia has blood this time? <laughs> God God willing. Um, but yeah, uh, apparently new achievements, melee weapons, animations, dialogue, competitive balance, adjustments, and surprises. So, um, and a bunch of different arenas. Uh, so that that's cool. Um, I, I think anytime this kind of thing it, it gets officially sanctioned, um, and there will be a bunch of new p- people playing this, so um, why not just hop in? I mean, most people already have Left 4 Dead 2, uh, just for like you know, having steam and stuff. So yeah, um, why not? So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I certainly would, would like to probably give it a try. Uh, after all these years, I haven't played in many, many years. So, um, you know, there will be, be a bunch of people that haven't played it for many, many years as well, hopping on just because of this. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And apparently it works with both, both left for dead, uh, one and two. So that's pretty Nice. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, you have it on the notes, Left for Dead, but, like, I'd only heard of two. So, yeah, I guess it works for both. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Moving on from that, um, Freedom Fighters got a long-awaited uh, modern PC release. Uh, so, I, I don't know if you know about this game. Oh, yeah, that's the that's the new Sonic-style game that was <laughs> immensely popular several years ago. No, no, no. Um, Freedom oh. Fighters was a game, uh, it was like a, an OG Xbox-era game. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Oh, no, actually, I think I might have seen the cover art and like didn't pay attention. <laughs> yeah, it has a, 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 a red, white, and black um, uh, uh, cover. And this is actually, like, a cult classic. People love this, um, but, like, it didn't sell very well, but the people who played it loved it. And a lot of people probably didn't get it because it was, like, an EA game and they didn't think anything of it. Um, and apparently this game is, like, the shit. It's really good. Uh, so um, I I have it for OG Xbox and never, never really got a chance to play it. So um, have, uh, I'm sure the... The PC version was even better um, because usually it was at the time a lot better. So um, I'd be probably more than happy to get the uh, the 
the modernized PC release here. They didn't like remaster it or anything, but just made sure it ran properly and it probably has uh, modern graphical settings and things like that. So um, I think that's really cool. But uh, and apparently the music is amazing. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. This is um, Kurt from HG101 of uh, the show uh, really loves this game too. So uh, I, I trust his opinion. So I thought thought that was cool. Also, um, Terra Onion, the makers of the SSDS3, um, the Neo Geo uh, uh, flash cart, and um, also the Mode. Uh, this is the um, optical drive emulator for uh, both the Saturn and the Dreamcast, uh, announced that they are adding support for the PS1 um, if you own it as well, or, or you, wanted to, you wanted to buy it. So it's a device that works for all three which is pretty awesome. Um, it is by far the most expensive uh, ODD, ODE for each, um, for each of its respective systems, I think. <laughs> but uh, it has a lot of functions that uh, it only has. Uh, like it has, uh, um, it has compatibility for um, solid state drives, for instance. So... Um, that, that is a big advantage that its competitors don't have. And um, you're not really supposed to swap them between systems, but uh, they they uh, you could theoretically take your, your, you know, your mode out <laughs> um, each, each time you want to put it in a different system. I would not recommend it. Uh, I, I, w- I, would, I would pick the system that you would want to pick. You know, you'd want it uh, installed into and then leave it there. But it's still a cool concept that to have one product that can be um, fitted on, on three different uh, types of consoles. So that's pretty cool. Uh, their interface is probably the best. Um, they have a really good UI for that. Uh, this might be, you know, good for people that are waiting, um, you know, but I, I, I still think the X station is probably the better choice just because it's way cheaper. It's way cheaper, but you know it, it's just one of those things. It's it's cool, you know. I don't, I don't know if you have any opinion about this, but uh, I think you're just going to be waiting. For yeah, not particularly. Drive. Like I, I don't really feel the need for a solid state drive in my PS One, you know. Yeah, just uh, like that, that's curated, that's cool in theory, but whatever. A curated list is the way to go. Um, anytime I've ever done it, uh, I don't want a whole lot of junk in there. Like uh, I have to get go through, a, you know, entire list of of. Of preser- painstakingly preserved demo discs, <laughs> you know they, they 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 have like every demo disc in, in some of those packs. The irony is like that stuff that I'd particularly be interested in. Well, I, I'm I'm just saying, you know, like you, you don't want them all in there though. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't. You, um, yeah, you, like you considering how ones. many games are on the PS One, just scrolling through the A's is gonna take you forever. They have every uh, official PlayStation magazine disc. <laughs> I mean, come on, like. That came out monthly <laughs> for years. <laughs> so um, let's see here. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so a new song from the Sound Machine for uh, Gorillas uh, season uh, season one of Sound Machine just released. Uh, the Pink Phantom, which is a collaboration with um, Elton John and well, who is the other guy? Uh, well, the name is spelled Six Lack. Like it looks kind of like black. Okay, gotcha. What amuses me, by the way, is that every time Gorillaz has had, uh, like, a cameo or a guest singer or a guest musician or whatever, if they ever show up in the music video, it's the people. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's like the Gorillaz have been doing this a lot, especially with Sound Machine, where they're just in real backgrounds and they've just made the cartoon Gorillaz cast interact with like real people or something you could also see this in the album humans where um that the, I, f- I forgot the name but the first song where 2d is just roller skating oh, okay. uh mm-hmm. where like the entire video is real video that somebody <laughs> took yeah. but then 2d is just kind of Skate put into it, it. Yeah. but like so with again I, I don't know how to pronounce it six black black but like with him it's no exception like there's the rapper doing his uh or i don't know if it's really rap but like there there's the singer doing his his thing but elton john is actually drawn as like it's pronounced black it is black okay but then you have elton john 
like as a cartoon gorillaized yeah, version of himself. Yeah. This, this is this is I think the first time they've ever done that where they took like a person and turned them into a gorillas like character. Yeah, Elton but... John was a cartoon as well. Um, Andre three thousand. Uh, they, they did that to him during. Oh, did thing. they? Yeah, they they made it like a CG. Um like weird representation of him because I, I doubt you would even recognize it was him because his face is covered and it has an X. Um, well. Like, yeah, it, he, he's, he's like his um, entire, he, he doesn't, he's shirtless and his head is like in a bag with an X on it. So like, you okay. wouldn't even recognize it as him, but that's supposed to be like the, cartoon version of him <laughs> oh and actually i don't know if this necessarily counts but you know that you know that uh the song i want to say clint eastwood where russell passes out and like the big spirit comes yeah, out yeah double the, the... Uh, the funky homo sapien yeah yeah would, would that also count <laughs> yeah he's a real rapper too um i don't know if that's supposed to be him though it is. It no is. but i mean like that's supposed to be what he like, looks like like yeah. this is the the musician in the video as opposed to the musician's voicing this yeah, weird I mean, ghost the, they've never never really had uh i'm sure they're playing fast and loose but they they probably came to him and was like hey uh, would you like uh, maybe even ask them like elton, yeah, Joel, elton john's a creative guy uh, well, that, that was the thing like in this video even if you even don't wanted that you know like even if you don't watch the video and you don't know the gorillas like if you saw a screenshot of this you'd be like oh that's an anthropomorphized monkey form of elton john like it's yeah. so weird <laughs> Yeah, but um, it was a great song. I actually really like it. Yeah, it really was. Um, I I, I like S- Strange Times, uh, probably the best out of out of this uh, one still. But which um, one? I'm still getting used to the names of the brand new album. Was that the most recent? Was that the previous recent one? The one Strange space? Times is the one with Robert Smith from The Cure. Uh, yes. Okay. The the, the, the second most recent one. Yeah. That that one was great. I I still have a love for Pac Man, but Strange uh, Times Pac-Man's is a freaking banger. Yeah. Um, but uh. It's, I, I really like the first one too. Um, yeah. Uh, um. What 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 was that? Um, I, I I'm I'm still bad with the names. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 look it up. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know. I've just been I've just been loving this album. It, it it's probably my favorite since Plastic Beach, and it, it may even surpass it. Uh, Plastic Beach is freaking killer. It, it's just that good. Um. Uh, yeah, no, it's Momentary Bliss, I'm sorry. I really love that song. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, that, that's one of my favorite Gorilla songs. So, uh, I, I think every song, um, ha- has been really good, uh, and some of them are even great. Uh, so, I, I really, really like this album. Uh, and it was, what a concept. They, they, basically every song is a single. Um, kind of yeah. like what Weird Al did, um, like with his last album. And it's also interesting because I don't know if there's... I mean, maybe there would be if we go back and look, but I don't know if there's even, like... You know how a lot of the album music videos, there's a sort of, like, plot and sense of progression? Even as far as what you said about Sound Machine being all singles, it seems that way, too. Even each music video is kind of just doing its own thing. It's not like, oh, this is clearly more of the adventures in this album. I mean, like, the gorillas are all drawn to look the same like this is this album's version this is their look but there isn't a sense of progression like they're sailing on the boat with plastic beach or you know that kind of thing or with the the windmill floating windmill with demon days yeah Yeah. but like uh it's just i i'm so surprised that they they went this route because like first of all i didn't expect this to be a thing i i didn't expect to have another album because he he said uh, damon alburn said like like gorillas was done um, yeah, he did kind of publicly say at the end of um ah oh, geez now the, now the concert we went to in philly yeah the now now i was like humans no after that yeah uh where like he didn't say it's officially over but it, it basically did he, he was just like maybe you'll see it in another 15 years or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. Just his exact words but like uh, like and then all of a sudden like a couple years later or maybe a year later um, we yeah, have it a, wasn't that long. Yeah, uh, we we have a brand new album, and it's one of the best ones. It's, it's coming out piece by piece, and it, it's coming out like I said, like Weird Al um, hit hit it big on the charts with his last album because he made a video for every single song on it, and he drip yeah. fed it. He like he didn't release them all at once. He 
he he did one, uh, you know, and then yeah. So a each song weeks. has its own hype, just because yeah. oh, the new Gorilla song is, and not only that, but they're releasing those teaser videos with um yeah. Well, number one, they have a trailer just straight up for the song, but they also have those phone conversations. Yeah, they have the skits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think this is the smart way to go. Um, you know, ever since Mandalorian brought back like um like hey, you can't binge this. Yeah, the concept <laughs> it, it, of weekly episodes. Yeah, the, ever since uh, like more and more, I like it because it. it it keeps people talking about it. Like, like it, it doesn't like just leave immediately, you know, like all, so many Netflix is like, Oh, that's already done. Yeah. Uh, you and, know? and again, not only that, but kind of what I was saying earlier, but like, if you were to just buy the album when like it, it all released at once, you'd be like, Oh man, these two or three songs are my favorites. Yeah. But you wouldn't with, listen with, to the, you wouldn't give them the attention. That every yeah. Song more than one. Yeah. But with each song, because these are not being released weekly; these are being released like whenever. Yeah. So w- with with each song, uh, there's all the hype and like all the YouTube comments chatting about it. Like there's a sense of community with each song as well. So like, yeah. There's the the lore of the comments, which actually in the Gorillas universe does make sense. It does matter. Uh, there's the the hype with each song. There's like all the views each song gets individually, so you can actually tell how each one is doing as opposed to like I bought the disc and you don't know specifically what i'm listening to yeah no this, this is great uh definitely give it a listen i mean it's all on youtube um you know legally and that's that's where they've been releasing stuff so yeah listen to them for nothing maybe a five or 15 second ad at worst like you're good yeah yeah moving on from that this is this is a a welcome announcement um g kids announced that uh, neon genesis evangelion is finally getting a blu-ray re- release along with the end of evangelion movie yeah, that's a genuine surprise. Yeah, the end of Evangelion movies haven't been um, released in North America since the DVDs from... Uh, yeah, since they were new. <laughs> yeah, from Manga Entertainment, which is no longer a company. Uh, and they were non-anamorphic, so they weren't good transfers. Uh, so, like, I I own them, but, like, I'm, like, the only person does. Like, I mean, before this announcement, like, they were, they were selling for, like, over $100. Um, yeah, that makes me think of like Paranoia Agent. It's like I hope you got that yeah. when you had the chance. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and and that's such a shame for like literally one of the most important anime series of all time. Um, yeah, this is one of those things. If people start buying this up, like oh my god, it's that it's that thing my dad always told told me about Evangelion, one of the most iconic anime of its time, which is true. But like, I I wonder if new people would like it because like evangelion was revolutionary and now it's not because it's been 20 years we've seen it it's like the seinfeld is not funny syndrome it's also a a reaction and commentary to the way anime was when it was released uh so yeah um it the stuff that they do in that series including the ending are way off beat from what was going on in the same genre um, well, well, part of the ending was due to budget constraints, but oh, yes, well, I mean the end of Evangelion. Um, oh, okay, okay. And the, what, yeah, what not the end of, end of Evangelion, Evangelion. The end of Evangelion <laughs> is like wh- wh- what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if, if you thought the the ending of the series was weird, like what the fuck was that? Oh, a movie. Perhaps this will help. <laughs> uh, so we're 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 also getting um, supposedly next year uh, another version of the of the ending <laughs> so uh um, well. with the with the rebirth movies um so oh, are they actually gonna end oh yeah well there's only one left and uh okay I think it got delayed till next year i think but um i mean those movies get delayed in forever but yeah that's not even news oh it's pushed back again okay but <laughs> the movies are legit awesome uh, in fact i would say that if you're gonna do this like actually watch the movies and if you're interested go watch the show because like yeah the, the, movies... the show has a lot of great moments but there are some parts that are pretty rough yeah. including multiple literal still frames for over a minute possibly over two minutes the movies are uh, like don't really have the flaws of the show uh so um yeah and the second movie might be one of my favorite anime things ever it's really really good um, the second the rebirth, rebirth movie or the end of Evangelion? No, the rebirth movies. I'm talking. Okay, about I was like, movies. "Whoa, that's." I mean, like people love it or hate it, but like one of your most favorite ever. I was like, "Whoa!" No, <laughs> I'm talking about um, rebirth yeah, the rebirth two point two two or whatever it's called. Um, uh, it is legitimately excellent. Uh, I have the third movie, and I hear 
uh, like all kinds of terrible stuff happens in the third one, and so like I'm. Well, that's not I, surprising considering what happens in what? not even the end yeah. of End of Evangelion. That shit gets brutal. But but I love the second one so much that like, and it ends on a like a high note. That yeah. like watching the third one is just so ma- ma- maybe maybe just wait for the fourth one to come out before you watch the third one. It, <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to be left like on that ah oh, kind of yeah. You yeah. know, it, it, it's like if you watched Empire Strikes Back mm-hmm. and then Return of the Jedi didn't come out for another like seven years. It's like oh jeez. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I hear um, well Shinji uh, the main character is not the big problem with him is just he just doesn't take responsibility for himself. Um, that's like a a big theme in the series, and yeah, and like and to to his credit, he's like a kid. Yeah, but like that, that doesn't neglected. make it any more fun to watch. <laughs> he's also neglected. Um, uh, like it's he. Yeah, his dad sucks. He, his dad is the biggest piece of shit. In the well, world. I mean, his his dad's a meme, right? Yeah. Like like father of the year. Yeah, like Nintendo Akari is a piece of garbage. Yeah, yeah. Get back in the Eva, or we're gonna have to put uh, this little girl who is beat to hell. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like when they were like, get in this giant mech, which makes you feel the pain that it would feel Mm -hmm. when you're fighting giant monsters and you've never done it before. And Shinji's like, fuck that. And they're like, okay, fine. Well, here's this girl who's in like a body cast from the last time she went out. And if you don't go in, we're putting her back in. It's like, (laughs) oh, jeez. Like, I mean, like, there's a lot of stuff that like pisses me off about Shinji, but like, no, he gets a pass for that one. That's some I, bullshit. <laughs> like I said, some of it is justified, but in the end, even after all that trauma, you do have to take responsibility for yourself and, you know, also, like, step up when the occasion calls for it. Um, it, it, it in real life, that's, that's the way it needs to be, because otherwise you just give up and you don't, you don't progress. And in this... Um, I hear he does really great in the in the second movie, and then I hear in the, in the third movie he's, he turns into a gigantic piece of shit. What the fuck is wrong with kind me? Of was uh, so, but like he really shows it in the third one. So oh uh, boy, end of Evangelion really solidifies that. Like your main character is a gigantic piece of shit. Like yeah, yeah. Just although I I will say by the way one thing about the TV series that I still think is one of the funnier sight gags. I've seen an anime Toothpicks. is yeah like w- where Shinji was naked for I forgot what reason and like there's a they, beer can co- in front of it yeah. yeah they cover his dick with a beer can so it's like ah ha ha because the beer can's like Shinji's kind of close to the table so the it, like the implication is he's got a small dick but then Misato picks up the beer can and you're like really but then you see behind the beer can is a much smaller container labeled toothpicks which is still completely <laughs> covered <laughs> The, 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 the fact that it's smaller is already funny, but the fact that it's labeled toothpicks, you're like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, also, this is significantly less uh, uh, exciting news. Uh, Monster Hunter movie trailer came out. Did you see it? <laughs> no, I, I saw that it was posted. I didn't even watch it. It's, Fuck this movie. Fuck you. It's directed <laughs> not by Paul it. W. S. Anderson, which means it will be. Uh, fantastic <laughs> yeah like I, I rage quit the resident evil movies when the third one came out and that was when i was in high school or college what the fuck chance do you think monster hunter has when i'm hard. not even invested in the like series hard. and it's yet another look at how cool my wife is and this one doesn't even make sense it's yeah. like modern times fighting yeah monsters. military modern military aesthetic. like unless the unless the joke is that it's referring to those couple of levels in peace walker which it's not why would they no. do that this is a stupid fucking well, I mean, idea the resident evil games the movies have barely anything to do with the, the games anyway so it, it's, it's with the games themselves yeah but like this isn't even close this yeah. is like pacific rim without the mechs like what are you doing <laughs> what if some guy tried using a rocket launcher i don't know fucking know. <laughs> i'm not gonna spend much more time on this um, <laughs> yeah let's just go to your last thing please. yeah final, final thing uh it is rumored that jamie fox from uh amazing spider-man 2 uh, is to reprise Electro in the in the third Tom Holland Spider Man movie. Yeah, um, I, I actually I actually have high hopes for this because it's not like J- yeah Jamie Foxx was not the problem. No, <laughs> with Amazing Spider Man too. Uh, no, uh, like in fact, only... I I would argue that half the first half of the movie is good, and then the second half just yeah. shits all and, over itself. And like what what also entertains me because I have if if he's taken the role, I have no idea what he's going to look like, yeah. and I'm just amused by the idea that like. 
he doesn't have to look the same. Like they they could do a Ryan Reynolds. Remember when when he played Deadpool and then he played Deadpool for real? Like this might be one of those. <laughs> I just like the implications that like um I mean they they have what J.K. Simmons uh is in that universe now. Uh, yeah, that oh my god. So the that's implications so good. Are, are that all three Spider-Man cinematic uni- uh, live action cinematic universes are blending together in in Tom Holland's um which is insane uh, if they if they are even doing a continuity thing. Which means that Topher Grace is back, baby. <laughs> I mean, that would be really cool. I mean, what if, what if I mean, nah, we they, got they we got Tom. It's too late. We got Tom Hardy. Yeah, that's. I mean, Tom Hardy's a better choice. Um, for, for well, I mean, like I actually liked Topher Grace's like portrayal of Venom, but like his body type, though, no. like Brock. Uh, oh, Eddie like Brock a is like a, a literal bodybuilder, yeah. and Topher Grace is the dweeb from that '70s show. Yeah. Like his attitude was fucking great. I I genuinely loved his performance. I mean, but he, like you like he's like Venom a dick version of Tobey Maguire, which is what it was. So yeah, that, I mean, yeah, that that's on point. Yeah. Like that makes perfect sense. But like Same body type in that's Eddie Brock though. Yeah, Eddie Brock is supposed to be a linebacker. Like you, you know, he's built. He's huge. Built. Yeah. Um. So. But uh, I I just love this implication. Like, what if what if they brought back Paul Giamatti from the very end of Amazing Spider-Man Two, like as as the Rhino? Like, <laughs> Paul Giamatti was the Rhino. Yes. <laughs> I I didn't see the movie. That's okay. weird. So like, as far as I'm concerned, like, I actually like the Amazing Spider-Man One. I, I thought that was. I liked great. it quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I like. I, I felt that Toby Maguire was the better Peter Parker, but Andrew Garfield was a better Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like the argument of, about uh, oh, what was it? Um, uh, like, like Christian Bale's a really good Bruce Wayne, uh, but like uh, Michael oh, Keaton's a okay. really good Batman. You know. Like, yeah, and and by the way, props for finally using the lizard because Doc Connors was in. He was at least alluded to a couple times yeah. in the uh, in the Raimi movies, the and Raimi they never movies. went anywhere with it. So, like, we're doing the lizard. Here's the lizard. But just like I, I love the fact that even um, um, the Spider Verse actually uh, implies that it's merged with uh, it's merged with the Tobey Maguire universe as well. Well, so. well, it uh, like it the whole premise was merging realities though. Yeah. Well, so like they were trying to undo that. I, I think that's why what they're implying is that they're they're implying that Infinity War fucked up the Marvel universe. Um, in in uh in the Tom Holland one, in the last Tom Holland one, because um there's some stuff going on that with continuity. Uh, it's well, yeah, the Endgame's only... basic premise was time travel. Well, it was the only post um Endgame uh movie so far. So yeah, yeah. Uh, they they have talked about how, the fact that people being gone and then all of a sudden coming back and also the time ch- shift has you, actually you know what, had some effect on the universe. So you, you know what I want to see in that regard? It would be so corny. You you'd have to really do it right. But I, I want to see them bring in Madam Web. Oh. <laughs> like you've you've messed with too many things, Spider Man. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Why are you like a super <laughs> overseer of? Sp- Spider people. <laughs> well, they they did have like the first Iron Iron Spider uh, during that during that one. Um, oh, know. the um the, the the steel armor. Yeah, steel armor. Oh, the the, the steel spider. He's, he's I remember. Basic, he's basically just Tony Tony Stark, but as Spider Man. So. Uh, well, you know, there, there was a really funny joke in the Spider Man cartoon from the nineties. Yeah, that's where, what I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah, because because yeah, that was the last arc of the show mm-hmm. when. They they had, they had multiple Spider Man. They called it the Secret Wars, even though like the the comic yeah, that's not Secret what that was. Is, is... No 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 no. I do, I oh I forgot. It might have been. I know they covered the Secret Wars, but it was a watered down version. But whatever. The point was, things had gotten fucked up, so Spider Man needed to team up with other Spider Man. Yeah, and... including like the the the. the six yeah, the one with the six one. arms. Yeah, like yeah. what the fuck? But my favorite was when they when um. One of them took off his mask, and he had, it was a blonde guy. And the implication ben is that it's Riley. Ben Riley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Peter Parker was like, "I don't even want to know your story." <laughs> but uh, but the part that really got me was the the steel armor Spider Man, where like Peter Parker's talking to him, or like our Peter Parker's talking to him, and he's like, "Wait, you're you're rich in your universe?" And he was like, "Yeah, aren't you?" 
It's like, oh. <laughs> like, all the Peter other Parker's guys life famously sucks. Too, and and he, he has, like, no problems. <laughs> like, that, that Yeah, happened. Steel Armor Spider-Man is just doing great. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck. I mean, that that's one of the hallmarks of Spider-Man is he's always down on his luck. So, I mean, like... Yeah, he was a subversion of a lot of superhero comics because most superhero comics are like, there's crime, I better just stop what I'm well, doing and I'll, fight it. But Peter like Parker had like a real I mean, life. Like, like, you have Green Arrow and, and, and Batman who are, who are millionaires. You, you also no, but, have... no but, but, but not even that. Like, you don't focus very heavily on their civilian yeah, life anyway. Like, the whole thing with Peter Parker is like, he's got to manage going to school and yeah, like his dating. girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, and dating, yeah. Yeah, like, his romantic life, like, and he's got to stop crime? Like, how does he have a life? So that was, like, the, the quote-unquote realism, oh, or at may. least more realism, was, <laughs> like, what made Spider-Man so appealing. Whereas, yeah, Bruce Wayne's like, uh-oh, there's crime. I can do whatever I want, so I guess I'll put on my costume and go fight crime now. My, super, my superpower is money. <laughs> yeah, like, and Superman is Clark Kent, like, <laughs> yeah, Superman is Clark Kent, like, working as some schlub reporter, but, like... That doesn't really matter. He has a civilian life. How's he doing at home? It's fine. You know, it's, it's not an issue. But for Peter Parker, it was. So it's just funny yeah. to, to hear rich Peter Parker going and, like, and also, what, you're not like, rich? <laughs> also the fact that he lived in Queens, which was like, at the time, like the working person's like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pla- place to live in New York. So, um, yeah, not so much anymore. You have to be rich to live in Queens, basically. But, um, yeah. you know. That's one of those or things. he's going to 60s high school with his 60s sweater vest. <laughs> the, the spectacles. And, he, and with his giant Coke bottle glasses where Flash Thompson calls him a bookworm. Get out of here, bookworm. <laughs> it's so corny. <laughs> uh, and then he became James Franco. Um, uh, uh, wait, what? No. Oh, no, that was... no, James Franco was uh, Harry. He was Harry, one of Peter's yeah, good friends. You're, no, you're right. He was, he, she, yeah. she was dating Flash. Uh, Mary Jane was dating Flash. Okay, yeah, that's right. Uh, yes. Like in the yeah. very beginning. Very beginning of the movie. But anyway, we gotta wrap this show up. Yes. <laughs> we, can't, we can't be talking about the Raimi-verse. <laughs> <laughs> that is the show for this week. Please remember to subscribe to the Corrected Conscious, this YouTube and SoundCloud pages. If you haven't sub- sub- subscribed by now, I have no idea how you're listening this because you don't show up in searches <laughs> You're, you are very <laughs> dedicated to keep yeah bringing this page up <laughs> while there please give us uh thumbs ups likes and five star ratings on itunes that helps promote and spread awareness of the show and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going you can also catch us on thursday for our sister podcast corrective consciousness where, where we'll we'll be talking about um some more ps1 uh goodness here yeah we're not done yet yep 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 finally you can friend me as vice the gold on pretty much any platform and you could find me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in at exclusive live streams, like Castlevania 64, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, which includes Alan Wake, which I'm currently playing, and get in conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon accounts, which can be found at patreon.com slash Lotus Prince. Worth every penny. We'll catch everybody on Thursday, then. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.